let me show you how to be lazier in a good way. There are probably a couple of plugins that you use a lot and you always end up doing the same couple of moves over and over and over because you use them in a couple of ways. And that's why we have presets and plugins because we want to get faster to a certain point where we usually work since we're only using something like this or a trackpad. So I'm going to show you a faster way to set this up in Reaper because I honestly hate the idea of having to do the same five clicks over and over on one plugin or six plugins every session over hundreds of sessions and I want to save time. And straight from Exo City, my name is Juanchis and let's learn a little bit of how to setting up faster your plugins whenever you want to do some docking, some distortion, some compression. Okay, so I have this session. Uh, let me show you how it sounds. So, for example, maybe in this part of your song, you want your kick to sidechain all the way into the keys right here. So maybe these two instruments will interact together. But you want this heavy pumping feel to it. So I already have a video on how to load the plugins faster on Reaper. So instead of going into the FX browser and searching for Reacamp, I will only load it with the shortcut that I set and it loads up. I'll leave it linked in the description. You want to go check it out and notice that instead of being loaded up with the main inputs assigned to the detector circuit, it's being loaded with the auxiliary inputs and it already has a high pass. So I don't get triggered by the kick as much or with the low end because I want a precise timing for my compression. And I already have my threshold set at, at minus 18 because that's a usual level that works most of the times. And this should be like a really nice starting point. The only thing that I could be missing is to make ascent from the drums towards the pad. So let's drag the input output into the pad and it's going to come out one, two, because one, two is this guy into one, two, that's the main input of the track. So I want to go into the sidechain input of the rear cam. So I'll go into three and four. Now, when I hit play, So what I could do is only split the kicks. Don't let them go out into the main output. Remember, you can do this from the routing for track. You can set up this IO and click here, or you could do it a lot faster using the option and hitting the IO. So the green light, the green LED turns off and that means it's not going anymore to the master out and it's only being sent because there is the blue dot right there. The blue dot means it's sent, the green light means it's going out to the stereo out, and the orange one means that it's going, that it's receiving from another track. So now I have this kick, I can remove the send, so the docking is only listening to this kick now. So now I have the send made, I have this kick set apart, now I can only hit play. So how do you do this? You can just set the parameters any way you like and then you can hit the plus section right here and save the preset as default. For example, I save this as default sidechain and now anytime I load this plugin in any channel, it's going to be loaded up as Reacomp as a default sidechain because Reacomp, I always use it for sidechain compression or docking whenever I need to. That's the main use for it. For example, if I have something like the Reagate and I have no preset for it, Maybe I always want it to be around, I don't know, minus 28. I want it to listen to the main inputs. I want it to have a filter around, a high pass filter around 120. And the way I usually like to set up gates is to start with the release really fast and the attack with the release ultra fast and the attack as fast as possible. Usually this works for a great starting point. So I only change this to default preset and I can change it to JC default. 
I close the plugin, I delete it, and when I load again a React gate, there it goes. We can take this idea a little bit further because some third-party plugins might suffer from the same feeling, or they might not even have a feature like that built in. For example, whenever I use little plate, I feel that instead of having to go into this menu and saving as a new preset, a sound choice preset, uh, or trying to save it as a user preset, what I wanted is to always open up the same way. This will work if you're using it in different DOS. If you want to have your presets available in different DOS, you can do it like this. But if you're using mainly Reaper, it doesn't make much sense to use the library set up by the developers. So you might just want to use this and set up as JC default and I save it. And whenever I delete the plugin and I load it again, see, it's exactly as I set it up. This idea is really simple. It's really effective because you can see how much time you will save by doing these kind of things. Let's suppose, for example, that for this block, I more or less like the delay it has, but maybe I want to try something more. And Arturia has these extra options always built in in the, in the advanced section. I always want the input equalizer to be set on, so my repetitions be correctly separated from that. My original RE input, and maybe I always like to have heads one and one and three, for example, full wet with the sync button on to the eighth note. Uh, I want a little bit of flutter and I want a little bit of LFAO applied to the offset with a low rate and a high amount. And I want it to be synced around, yeah, half a bar that should sound right. So maybe that's a really common setting that I like to load up my plugin. I do exactly the same thing. I just go into here, I set up JC default and go on. It might look that like it, like this video won't go anywhere else. Let me show you one last thing why this could be an interesting way of working. Let's suppose you're already finishing a mix where you have these kind of things. For example, you have uh, all your bass and your drums like so, and you have this, and maybe you have Something like this, where you're already mixing down a project. And now you're doing this section and you want to load really fast into this. The idea that Slate brought with a virtual mix rack, but you don't have a virtual mix rack. Maybe you're using Cho Tape. That's a completely, completely free plugin. You can just right click, add to selected tracks. And since these plugins can also move as part of a group because they're part of a mixing console in some sense, you can already load them up as mix group one instead of having to do this every single time because I'm trying to show you how frustrating it will be to lose all of this time every time you load one. Well, it will be easier to just load up a default setting where you always have maybe you only want for virtual mix rack if you're using this plugin a lot for that. Uh, the compression on with a really small amount because you should be hitting a lot harder levels when you're mixing down in bosses we maybe a slow attack and a fast release, I don't know, like 10 milliseconds. And you want it to be 30, 15 inch speed might work. And you want it to start with the floater and go up and go off. And now whenever I do something like this and I save this as default, as usual, whenever I select again these three channels and I load it again. So that way, whenever I load it again into the selected tracks, and I'm only using this plugin for summing. Now I have it. I have it at hand and I can push all of my plugins together. I think the idea speaks for itself. It's a really short video. Uh, I, it's a really short video. I'm using show tape model because it's a pre plugin that sounds amazing for tape emulation. You can try the different algorithms and see how it fits your own production.
and it will probably bring a lot of different results. Be sure to have fun with these kind of ideas. They might seem really simple at first sight, but you can really push these ideas a lot harder and harder and harder as long as you like. Another huge benefit is, for example, if you save a certain preset of a plugin because you use it always for some audio correction, for example, RX. If you're doing some noise reduction in whatever media item you have in your session, it's easier to just load it set up in a certain way and to have it loaded in adaptive mode with a certain quality and it's simply going to save you a lot of clicks throughout all of your future months or years working in this in this business. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any of them. If you want any subjects for me to approach, I'd be happy to jump into them. I'll start making some videos on music production and not only on Reaper workflow. This was a nice way of trying to get my channel going. Or I'll start making music in Reaper and try to figure out how to use Reaper musically, not just as a playback machine. So, you know, like, comment, subscribe and all of those things that people on YouTube say. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.